Hey everyone, Doc Ron Bio again here to uh, explain the mitotic cell cycle. So this is for the beginning biologist, middle school, ranging from uh, seventh grade perhaps to freshman year in high school. So we're going to explain some of the vocabulary here and how it fits into the actual description of the mitotic cell cycle. So a quick look at the mitotic cell cycle though. Uh, basically what you want to be able to describe is this long, uh, lengthy part of the cycle called interphase. And this very small portion of the cycle called the mitotic phase. So if you look at the details of this, interphase is the majority of the life of the cell. So here gene expression is happening, the cell is doing its thing. If it's a neuron, uh, it's a brain cell, it's, it's doing brain cell stuff. Interphase can be broken up into three parts, G1, GAP1, or growth one, however you wanna look at it, uh, and G2 down here, those cells growing expressing proteins, making more organelles, G2 preparing to divide. But the really important part here with respect to the cell cycle, the mitotic cell cycle is S phase. S phase stands for synthesis. And what are we synthesizing? DNA. So we're duplicating our DNA prior to doing the mitotic uh, portion of the mitotic cell cycle. So we duplicate our DNA prior to going into, uh, represented here, the mitotic phase. So the mitotic phase basically has two steps, mitosis and cytokinesis. So if you look at this, as you proceed through the mitotic phase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then eventually cytokinesis. I'm not gonna focus on the steps of this uh, cycle for this video, uh, but keep in mind what we're doing here. Your DNA is duplicated, and the mitotic phase here will uh, divide that duplicated DNA using the steps of mitosis, and then it will eventually divide those uh, that parent cell into two daughter cells using cytokinesis. So I wanna talk about a little bit more of the vocabulary here and focus on the difference between some key words here and how it fits into the context of the cell. So uh, a question that some students struggle with is the kind of cells that are dividing so if you look at this vocabulary here, we have somatic diploid and 2N on one side and gametic haploid and N on the other side. So basically what we're looking at here, these are cells that divide using the mitotic cell cycle. And these are cells that divide using the meiotic cell cycle. Okay, so I'm only going to describe meiosis in the context of how it makes cells that create diploid cells, okay? So uh, meiosis is a, is a completely different uh, form of cell division that we'll get to later in an, another video. But the difference here, somatic versus gametic, let's cover that one first. So if you look at this person here, um, everything except the cells used for reproduction, that being in males, sperm, and in females, the ova or the eggs, um, everything else is a somatic body cell. So we're talking uh, muscles, organs, skin, brain cells, everything here uh, with the scribbles on it are somatic body cells, okay? Uh, if we're looking here at the sex cells, the gametes, these are, are inherently different cells that divide through a different process that are used in sexual reproduction in sexually reproductive organisms. Okay, so we'll describe that process a little later, but understand that these are inherently different. Okay, the difference is that these somatic body cells are diploid and these gametic sex cells are haploid. What does that mean? Diploid cells have two sets of chromosomes, whereas haploid sets only have one set, okay? We describe the number of chromosomes in each of these different types of cells using this vocabulary. So N represents number of chromosomes in a set, okay? 
So oftentimes I'll start off this, the description of this process using humans as an example. So for humans, Rn equals 23. That means that in our sperm and eggs, there are 23 chromosomes, one set in those haploid gametes. Okay, so I'm talking about all this stuff over here. Diploid somatic cells differ because as I just said, they have two sets. So we put this two in front of this N to represent that number, the number of chromosomes in a diploid somatic cell. So again, if we're talking about humans, N equals 23. So if I put a two multiplying this N, which is 23, I'll get 46. So in a human diploid somatic cell, you have 46 chromosomes. Okay, uh, so we're going to continue talking about really the details of the mitotic cell cycle, but we'll describe some of the haploid cells to, uh, to achieve this as well. So here, we have two haploid cells, the sperm and the egg. Uh, so we get, again, we said that in one set, we have 23 chromosomes for sperm. Okay. Again, in humans, in one set for the egg, we have an N of 23, meaning 23 chromosomes. Uh, so when that egg is fertilized, so at fertilization, for re sexually reproductive organisms, this sperm will fuse with this egg and fertilize it, and you'll get your first diploid cell, the zygote. So if we add N and N, or 23 and 23, for humans, you will get a 2N of 46 chromosomes. So life for humans starts off at this zygote, this fertilized egg, and takes these 46 chromosomes, and then this cell will go on to become two cells, and those two cells will go on to become four cells. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate 46 chromosomes each round of the mitotic cell cycle and keep making the same cell, making the same cell. So every cell that we make, every diploid cell that we replicate will have a 2N of 46, 2N, 46. And this is sometimes complicated for students because what does N mean? Uh, you know, you have to kind of stick with it to get it. So I will say this, obviously N represents a variable here uh, in this mitotic cell cycle equation. So for different organisms, you're going to see a different N. For humans, N equals 23. And we'll go over some examples of different Ns for different organisms. But take a look at this picture right here. So I want to visually represent what is happening in, again, these haploid gametes and how they come together after fertilization to make a diploid cell, a diploid cell with two sets. So hopefully, two sets of chromosomes. Hopefully this picture makes this a little easier, right? You can see one set coming from dad and one set coming from mom, okay? So what is the end here? Well, I'm counting one, two, three chromosomes, so N equals three. Again, the same thing for the egg, one, two, three, so N equals three. What is our 2N? Well, the 2N is the number of chromosomes in two sets. Again, one set coming from dad and one set coming from mom. So our 2N here is one, two, three, four, five, six. 2N equals six. Okay, you'll notice we have two number ones, one from dad, one from mom, two number twos, one from dad, one from mom, two number threes, one from dad and one from mom in this zygote. And literally early on in development, every cell is gonna stem from this initial zygote. Okay, let's take a closer look at the details of the process. So we're gonna visualize mitosis, excuse me, we're gonna visualize the mitotic cell cycle, cell division in two ways. Um, I teach my students um, 
the first way primarily because it's the quicker way and, and sort of helps you envision the actual steps of the mitotic cell cycle. So again, if we're dealing with this organism over here that has an N of three, thus a two N of six, you're gonna start the mitotic cell cycle with six chromosomes. Now after S phase, drawing this arrow upwards to show you the duplication of this genetic material. I'm showing this now red sister chromatid here to show you the consequences of S phase in interphase. So now you have 12 sister chromatids that will go on to create 12 chromosomes. So after the events of mitosis, remember mitosis' job is to separate duplicated genetic material. So after this is achieved, you'll have two daughter cells that has separated those 12 sister chromatids. Envision this being separated and that being separated and that being done six times. What you'll see is one daughter cell with six chromosomes and a second daughter cell with six chromosomes. And keep in mind, we've basically gone back to the beginning. We're basically taking that diploid cell and made a clone of it. Uh, so we've basically taken one model cell, duplicated the genetic material and split, and now we have two daughter cells with the same starting genetic material, that being a 2N of six over here. So that's sort of the quick method. You show it up and then you show it dividing uh, twice. Um, I like this way because basically it shows you that we're doing this duplication event in S phase of interphase and uh, the vocabulary changes. Obviously you're calling, you gotta call them sister chromatids to do that, but then it shows you after division that you get back to that six. You can also, also visualize these, um, you know, every single chromosome. It's a little more busy, but uh, the complete visualization method also works very well. So if we start with these numbers again, n equals three, two n equals six, you'll see that uh, a cell that has a two n equals six, again, has two number ones, two number twos, and two number threes. What happens at the end of S? Well, now we're representing those chromosomes in that characteristic X sort of butterfly pattern, showing that they've duplicated into sister chromatids. Okay, so now each chromosome, one of which came from mom and one of which came from dad, is now duplicated, right? So keep in mind uh, the, the, uh, the pattern here, one from mom, one from dad. One, one set came in a haploid gamete from mom and one set came in a haploid gamete from dad, okay? After the events of mitosis, you will take all of these uh, chromosomes that have duplicated into sister chromatids and separate, 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 okay? Um, it'd be easier to show it with that. That marker's not working very well. Um, right, so this is gonna separate, that's gonna separate, that's gonna separate, that's gonna separate. And if everything goes well at the end of mitosis, you go back to the beginning. So you'll have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in this daughter cell, number one. You'll have one, two, three, four, five, six in the second daughter cell, okay? So you have to get back. The job of mitosis is to get back to six. Daughter cells have a 2N of six, just like the parent cell, and that's a really big take home message. So the parent cell started off with a 2N of six. All that genetic material is doubled, so technically you have 12 sister chromatids, and those 12 sister chromatids are each uh, separated from one another and half go into this daughter cell, half go into this daughter cell, and you're making new daughter cells using the mitotic cell cycle that have the same 2N as the original parental cell. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a little more depth to the vocabulary maybe that your, your teachers are throwing out to you. Um, you should know the difference between diploid and haploid. You should know the difference between somatic and gametic. And really, the relationship between N 
and 2n should now be apparent. Your teacher should be able to give you an n equals whatever, and you should be able to tell them the number of chromosomes in a diploid cell and how it divides, okay? So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know what you think. See you next time.